What is up everyone? Welcome to the video. Today we're looking at something very cool. How to get a cryptocurrency price history chart for any token you can really think of that's found on a DEX. Here we have Aave for the last seven days. Interactive chart. We can change the date range. Automatically renders for us. We can even change the token. Let's go die. A stable coin should be around that $1 mark. How cool is that? All done simply using Morales SDK. Something that usually would have taken weeks, now done in a matter of minutes using Moralist. If this interests you, stay stuck in and I'll show you how to do this. So, to start off, here I have an instance of Moralist running on some boilerplate code. And to get price history data, first we need to get token price. If you've been watching our videos, you know that we have the Moralis token get to token price endpoint on the Web3 API. And this takes as inputs as parameters, a chain, which is Ethereum mainnet by default, so we don't, won't need to put that in, but it takes address as well. So we'll have to provide a cryptocurrency token address for it. So here on Etherscan, we seem to have Aave open. Let's just get the contract address from here. Price seems to be around $323, so we can use that as reference. Check that as an input over here, and voila, we get the token price on Uniswap right now for $324. How cool is that? Next off, the less known parameter to the get token price uh, endpoint is the two block parameter. So by default, we go for the latest block in the Ethereum blockchain. But as we know, the Ethereum blockchain gets a new block added with new transactions about every 13 seconds. So if we take the latest block over here, we should get the same response as first time, which is correct. But now we can query for the token price of Aave, let's say 20,000 blocks ago. So that should be slightly different, $265. So in the past, in the past 20,000 blocks, the price of Aave has gone up 20 US dollars. How cool is that? Morales just makes your life so easy, isn't it? You just put a few inputs and voila, you get the data you want. Now. Of course, we, we have a way to get the token price and the historic token price. So that's good for our X axis on our chart. But for the Y axis, the blocks don't really give the user a clear representation on when that price occurred because we're used to more calendar type date inputs. So we gotta, gotta figure out how to change these blocks into dates. And we don't have to look far. We just go to the Morales documentation and we have this endpoint called get date to block. So essentially, you only have to provide a specified date in any format that is accepted by moment.js, and it outputs the closest block to that date. How cool, Morales just making your life ever so easy. So if we try that out over here, we do await morales.web3 API, go native, and then go get date to block and this in turn similar takes as a parameter a chain but by default we're on the Ethereum mainnet which is good for us and then it takes a date and for the date we can just put let's try today's date so today's date is the 20, uh, 2021 go October and the second voila voila look at this Today, this morning, we were on block 13 million or 133 million, whatever that is, Morales does it so easy for you. Boom, boom, boom. So now, essentially what we need to do, we just need to create an array of days we want to look at. And our boilerplate code gives us an input of days we want to look at into the past. Also gives us a token with an address. You'll see that in the boilerplate code. And then we can just use the get token price or get that date to block, first of all, to change those dates into blocks and then input those blocks into our token price endpoint. And then we should have our data for our chart. How easy is that? So let's open our project over here. This is the boilerplate code you just saw. It's available in the description below if you wanna play around this with this yourself. So as you see, we've just hard coded the dates, blocks, and prices for our app, but let's create these ourselves. So for the dates, as you saw, we have the uh, radio button inputs for the days we want to look up into the past. So that is given by the days variable. So we can just create an array by doing array. Number of days we want to look into the past. So that'll be days. And then we can fill this array. Uh, map through the array 
dum dum dum, e and index arrow function. And now, because we bring into our code moment.js, we can use the moment function. Where, where were we here? Moment. So this gives the current date and time. And then because we want to create an array, we can subtract always the index of the array we created. And we'll always subtract by a day. So we'll get daily data. And then we'll format that nicely to look look pleasing for our user. So we'll do the year, year, month, and day. How lovely. Of course, because we're subtracting, these dates will be in descending order. So we'll just reverse this whole array to put it in descending order better for a price history chart. We can do a console.log to see what our dates look like. Because we call dates over here, we'll just call this dates one for now. So we don't get any problems with having the same name a variable. So refresh the page. And now look at this, we have an array of dates looking into the past and it's affected by the input that the user selects. Now we can use our Morales endpoint for um, get data blocks to get the blocks. So let blocks one equal and we'll have to wait because we're calling Morales and we have multiple calls. So we have to wait for all of them. And now we'll map through our dates. And for this, it'll be an asynchronous function again. Synchronous async. And over here, put a little arrow function. Dun, dun, dun. And if we go back to our thing, we should be able to get this code from here. The get to block call, get date to block call. And for our date, we don't have to hard code anything anymore because we have our array of dates and we're mapping through it. So we'll just put an E in there. How good is that? Now, if you console log the blocks, blocks one, see what that gives us, refresh the page. Very, very good. We get an array of all the different dates we created and then the block that is closest to that date. How cool is this? Morales, Morales, Morales. I'm telling you guys, get on it. It's so easy. It makes your life so much easier. And now finally, we just got, need to get the prices. This will be very similar to our blocks call. So let's just get that from over here. Paste that into there and call this prices one. Away promise all will map through our blocks, right? Blocks one. And then we will, we won't get the native, we'll get the token, get token price. And as parameters, we take an ads. And because in our boilerplate code, we have this select input that selects a token, we also get the token address and store it in address. So we can just chuck that into there. So address will equal address. And then our two block parameter, which will give us the block is going to be just the E. So because we're mapping through all our blocks, we'll just put everyone in there and then we'll see what we get. But ooh, let's let's see because our blocks gives objects and we only want we don't want the whole object of each seven elements. We just want the block parameter. So we'll just have to put that in here dot blocks, not a comma, a dot. And that's better. And now we console log. Let's not console log the block. Let's console log the prices, prices and see what we get. Refresh the page and voila, voila, voila. What do we have? We have the prices, US dollar price, $325. Ooh, no, that doesn't seem good because now we are only getting, is that right? We are getting the same price. Let's just, Hmm. Let's do our dates again. No, do our blocks. One. 
see if that works. Do a refresh over here. So we are getting different blocks, right? Yeah, we are getting different blocks. And then box one, E dot block. No, we don't do E dot blocks. We do E dot block. That is better. No prices one. Sorry for that. Silly, silly me. Control save and refresh. Now we should get, yeah, a array of prices for the different days stored in a US dollar price. We can also do a nice thing and just get prices. Prices one will equal to prices one dot um, dot map and then do an arrow function and only get the US dollar price because we don't need the whole object. Now rerun this code. And now we get an array of the prices. How good is that? So now we get the dates. We have an array of the dates. Then we get the price, we get the blocks from the dates and we get the prices using the blocks. And now the last thing to do Let's just change our labels to dates one and then go into our label. We can change our label. I think we actually do save. Yeah, we do save the symbol of the selected token. So we can just call that that over here in our chart declarations. And for our prices, we call prices one. And now just using a few simple Morales calls to Morales Web 3.8, Web 3 API endpoints, we should be able to render a historic price chart. Wow, look at that. Ave for the last seven days has the dates on the x-axis and the price on the y-axis. Let's see if we change the date, date range automatically renders for us. How cool is that? Let's see if we change the token, go to die. And wow, how cool was that? Didn't take us any time at all. We just use a few cool Morales Web3 API endpoint calls and we get a historic price, price chart for any cryptocurrency token that's on any token. For now, the boilerplate code has a list of the default um, default Uniswap tokens, but you can change this. We can even look at, at Binance Smart Chain. We don't have to look at Ethereum mainnet. All of this done easily using Morales. As I said, the boilerplate code is down in the documentation, uh, not the documentation, in the description below. Please have fun with this. Start building yourself. Morales makes building so much easier and let's just get Web3 apps out there. Cool, hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one.